So I'd like to show you a little bit about the AI pen, and a little bit about how I use it every day. Sure, you start with a couple of examples like, how many people live in Barcelona? What's the population of the city? Finding population. The population of Barcelona is approximately 1.609 million people. So great. So I can just ask questions and get answers really easily. I can also then take that answer and translate it. Translate that answer to Catalan. So the local language here in, in Barcelona. Translating. La població de Barcelona és d'aproximadament 1.609 milions de persones. So now I can then come over here and not only have the translation, but that I can show it in the laser. So there is the question about the population translated to Catalan, and then I can come over here and um, see what it is. Maybe show it to somebody here local that I'm trying to uh, interact with, communicate with. So then I can also use the AI to play music. Let me show you that. Play Beatles songs that have the word love in the title. So now it's going to go off. It's going to do a search, find those songs, and then go and start playing them. So that's great. Then I can use the laser not only to look at the song, but actually also control the experience. So I can start and stop the music. I can go to the next song. And stop. So you have a very simple series of gestures that I can control the device. You saw a couple of them of me rolling my hand around to go to different um, buttons on the, on the uh, system. I can uh, then use this uh, pick gesture to activate a button and then just close my hand to go back and then wherever I am if I use this gesture going out I get more information so then again I can roll my hand around to change what's selected and then pick to go back to the music experience and then I just put my hand down and the laser is gone so it makes it very very easy to interact with voice with the laser with gestures I can also take a photo. And there we go. There is a, uh, a photo. And so now that you can see the preview that I got a uh, good picture of you, there you are right in the middle. And then what happens is the photo is uploading to our web experience. We call that humane.center. So you can go and access that photo and share it out. And of course, see it in, uh, in full color. So that gives you a little bit of an indication of the sorts of things we can do. We can ask questions and uh, do translations and play music, we can take photos. We can also maybe do try one more thing, which is uh, one of the newest features that we're working on, which is um, analyzing a scene. So let's, let's have a look at that. Describe the scene in front of me. So now what's happening is it's using the camera analyzing. and it's uh, looking at the uh, at the scene and uh, it's going to go over and analyze that and then give me a pretty nice complete description of what's in front the latency is something that we're working on and of course we're roaming here uh, in uh, Barcelona so it's just taking a little bit of extra time the scene in front of you appears to be an indoor event possibly a trade show or exhibition there are various booths and displays with individuals dressed in business attire. Prominent signage for Cisco and CTE suggests that tech companies are exhibiting. The environment is well lit and the flooring appears to be wooden. Okay, so I think it's done a very, very nice job of capturing a lot of detail and even read a couple of the signs, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Can you make phone calls? So, you, so the, uh, the AI pin has an eSIM, so you can make phone calls, you can send messages, let me just even tell you about a little bit of the architecture and get a little uh, understand a little bit about what's happening. Is that we have a, a large language model that we uh, that we're using right now? We're using OpenAI's GPT. So when I put a finger down and speak to the device, we uh, transcribe that text and we send it off to the uh, LLM. But we don't get answers from the LLM. Instead, what we do is we have this arch architecture we call the AI bus, and the LLM is part of that. 
but then we connect other services to the AI bus to actually get answers. I'll show you one more example. What's the orbital period for the planet Saturn? So that's kind of a scientific question. So we have a partnership with uh, Wolfram Alpha, period. and we're going to just go off and get that scientific information. The orbital information. period of Saturn is approximately 29.4 years. So we get that scientific information from Wolfram Alpha. So we've, we've prompted the LLM to understand about the different tools and services that it has available to it. It then goes and selects those services, then our software accesses them, and then we get the answer back and we format it to return. So we so think how it's a. Do we look at this product like is it an accessory to our existing products or is yeah. it going to replace smartphones maybe yeah. in the next decade or so? So it's it's a great question. So you know for many many years now um, I've had a smartphone, but I also still have a laptop, right? And so even though the smartphone has become you know a, a platform where there are so many features, so many things you can do, we didn't get get rid of the other computers because maybe if I want to do some design work or make a spreadsheet, the laptop is still a better form factor for that. So now if we go to the other end to something that's even more mobile, it's even easier to access. It's just right on my front, the form factor just makes it very, very simple for me to go and access information, play music, do some translation, communicate. It's just very, very easy uh, to access. And so that's where we think it sort of fits in, sort of above even where the smartphone is, where maybe that's best for consumption and, and maybe some apps and experience, maybe playing games. But the, the AI pin is for that quick and easy access, always there, always available uh, set of experiences that I think from uh, this demo, you see very, very common things that people do all the time. Can you record videos? Yeah, sure. So uh, that's uh, we have that set up with a, uh, a different gesture. So, so we've set it up so that uh, we record uh, 15 second videos. So all you need to do is go over and uh, start the gesture and you'll see that while video is going on, the green LED is flashing. And so it tells you and everybody else that the camera is on. And so you'll also see that when the microphone is on, you get the orange or amber LED. So right now, the AI pin, after just a couple of seconds of using it, it goes to sleep. So right now, it's not listening. The camera isn't on. There are no wake words. And so we think that's a really good way for you and for everybody else around you to understand from a safety, privacy, security standpoint, what the AI pin is doing when it's active. And so you know it's also active because somebody is either touching it or you see one of those LEDs. I think it's a, just a good way uh, to make people feel secure that they understand what's going on when the AI pin is in their environment. Great, and last question, how's the battery life? I would say the battery life is a really interesting story. So you'll see that it's on my clothing. So we hold it on with these two pieces. This is the main computer, the AI pin itself. And then this part is the battery booster. And it connects with magnets. And so this is how I put it on my, uh, on my jacket. <laughs> Clumsy for being a second. It's usually uh, it's pretty easy. Let me just try that again. It's a, uh, been a long conference so far. There we go. It's very easy. And so... Uh, that battery, when I put it on, it lasts uh, uh, pretty much into the uh, mid-afternoon. And then when the battery gets low, the AI pin ships with this charge case and a second battery. So I can always have a second one there available, and when this one is low, I can just swap it. And I don't need to power off the AI pin to do that. It's just I can just hot swap the batteries. And then when that first battery, which was low on power, goes into the charge case again, it can be recharged. And then, so I'm just good to go all day. We call that our perpetual power system. Great. Okay, great.